Props, manure, <clears throat> anything else from 2025 this year and or what you learned in 2024 that you tried again this year, aha moments or something that's at least worth looking into? Um, I think our big, probably my biggest aha moment is there's <laughs> within the different uh, camps of agriculture, you know, there's all these different yep. camps and stances. Yep. Uh, I think being open-minded to um, whether you're going down the soil health kick um, or you're conventional, just being open-minded to decisions. But as we've implemented more programs and got on more acres, the big thing I'm learning is we can, if we focus on biology, we focus on out competing pathogens, we focus on nutrient efficiencies, we can greatly reduce our dependence on, on nutrients and fungicides early on. It's it's okay. a it's a big deal and yeah. like like for instance like where we're maybe putting a half rate of PK on in the fall compared to university standard across a lot of our acres we have managed um, we're also coming in with our side dress and we're putting sulfur not yeah. just nitrogen it's potassium sulfur well, it's a cocktail <laughs> it's a cocktail <laughs> you know and uh, so with that that extends bumping potassium in season during that biggest uptake curve of rapid growth going into reproductive that has been a big plant health benefit the biology and furrow with maybe some starter some carbon followed by this this side dress that that i feel buys me two to two and a half weeks of disease free into reproductive as a whole so it's had to, it's made me have to shift my mindset of fungicide r1 you know well maybe we should scout yeah. get in our fields and say well because we're doing this this and this we can actually get to our two and a half, pushing our three, and let's extend that last bit. So my, the big takeaways as our as a group, as mm -hmm. we sit down and have agronomy meetings, is offense. Think of it as a basketball game. Three quarters of offense, hard offense, and that fourth quarter in row crop production, you should definitely keep defense in the back your back pocket. Okay. Okay. You know, where we've tried to say, okay, let's just go with more carbon, sulfur, we're gonna copper's so important for um plant health and, yep. and defense pathways within the plant. Um as a whole, I, I don't think we do a good enough job in the corn belt or have the budget to feed the crop where it has nutritional nutritional fitness to completely defend itself against pathogens and late season disease stresses. Yeah. You, the plant's already trying to kill itself. Exactly. Hormonally. Yep. You know, it's trying to senesce to finish and make grain. And so with trying to be nimble, I, I think be open-minded. Hey, I'm doing all these things to promote health. I don't really want to use fungicide anymore, but keep it in your back pocket, save it to when you're at full canopy Yeah. And, 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 and leave that there. And so where we've been agile in that and we've, We've got uh, a really dry year, don't really have much disease pressure, there's no rain in the forecast. Maybe you hold off if you're doing all these other things. But if it's a wet year and it's just raining, your plants aren't transpiring, you got yeah. dews till noon, Yeah, you better be in your field scouting because there's a lot of yield to protect. Because if you've done a good job in the first three quarters, there's a lot of yield to protect. Well, I mean, if anybody's a um, Husker fan, a common theme was we never played in the fourth quarter. Okay. No. Yeah. Don't be like the Huskers. <laughs> Don't be like the Huskers. <laughs> okay. So, um, but yeah, that's that's one of those things I I always think of. You know, races. You know, a four by a four by four race. Yeah. Where where do you put your fastest guy usually? Yeah. At the very end. Yep. You know why why do you do that? Well, to finish off strong. Yep. You know, and um, but I also understand too that maybe we got to change the budget. Yep. But for that to happen, you got to start planning now. Yeah. And, um, yeah, just, just going back to that part. So I remembered, um, the question I was going to ask earlier, what have you seen yourself with, of course, take away California, Washington, and Oregon, take those out of your mind yep. in season applications of biologicals. It, I, I get to the part of like, we talk about the phylosphere, yeah. stuff like that. Is there opportunity there or do we need to still have a foundation? The foundation is more important than trying to influence it later when it comes to the biological realm. Foundations are highest consistency with okay. biology. Um, and, and I really think it's identifying like in Nebraska, we're having 
good success with the fall breakdown. Um, low tillage, a lot of no-till. We, we see great things there. So starting in the fall, getting that residue to break down. As we was working with some of our dealers, it's like, well, you got residue. I can still find pretty hardy corn stalks from two, yes, two years oh, ago. Yes, 100%. And, uh, Let me take you to a couple <laughs> fields, Clint. <laughs> so, and, and so, you know, I, I think – identifying that i don't really have that problem back home you know we, whether yeah. if you do light tillage or vt or got a lot of guys still deep rip yeah you're mechanically destroying them and with yeah. the the human environment we degrade stocks pretty well in that in our area so knowing that we'll just back to let's let's supercharge that let's get these stocks to break down so our planting conditions our ground warms up quicker that's been a success and uh the in furrow early season um, I will say this, as we were, we're working with some large dairies, okay. as we're Y-dropping uh, a little bio aggy and Y-drop mixes, mm-hmm. side dress mixes, foliar apps, our feed ration has completely changed. We're changing okay. um, starch to crude to fat ratios, digestibility, um, toxins, all those things are go- coming out. So it's kind of interesting because then at the end of the day, they're having to change their supplements yeah and minerals going into it a little bit but for the better you know yeah. so there's there's a bigger there's a lot more to be discovered yeah that's a great way to put it and i i don't know if it was one of your videos or a video i was list, or a podcast i was listening on the way down here is like we still don't know a lot <laughs> <laughs> about what's going on yeah. you know and we keep chipping away at it um last question of this podcast um so we talked about 2025 hindsight dewey days yeah talking about your testing protocols, how can we utilize those protocols to maybe predict what could happen? And we all understand mother nature can flip on a dime on us. But I think to myself, like, I think a lot of people would be willing to change paths in a season if they could have confirmation with data saying, okay, it's showing this. We need to do X, Y, Z. Yeah. I, um, I think there's some things coming within. Okay. Plant genetic expression testing. I think there's going to be some things there that predict plant stress pathways within the plant. Okay. Um, but I don't think we're we're there yet. I think you can learn a bunch, like sap. When we see you know, one of the things we'll see um, when the plant starts to get stressed, nitrogen starts to bottleneck, and all that means is. Um, it's not going to a usable form in the plant. It just stays mm-hmm. in the vacuole as a nitrate. It yep. starts to accumulate. Well, that puts pressure on the vacuole, the whole system. Now, photosynthetic energy that's can you know that's been, photosynthesis is converting energy has to be redirected to process nitrate instead of going to reproductive tissue to support the root, yep. keeping it alive. So we can see little things like that. You know, you can see. Um, sugars start to accumulate you can start to see nitrate accumulate and that's that's the start of the whole the whole piece and okay. you know you get that bottlenecking that is a major precursor to disease or uh, an insect potential infestation yeah. so there's little things but at, at this point in time i i uh, and we've been guilty of this as a, as a company um, you got all this data at your disposal you set behind your laptop and <laughs> yeah. you know act like you know what you're talking about you know and and it Getting in your fields is still important. Yes, it's 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 critical, and I think it's it's critical early in the season, uh, in a mid-season check-in. But if I could, you know, my my advice would be late season in your fields. Yeah, weekly, you'll yep. learn a lot about things can change in a four-day window. You can go from a healthy, mm, yeah. completely healthy green plant to come back. And uh, I was humbled this year. We had a, a seed guy come on one of our plots, and he's like, we had. The plot had tons of double ears, you know. So he's like, I've never, I haven't seen a field this year with this many doubles and plant yeah. health this good at Dent. Yeah. And uh, so I went home that night feeling good. Yep. I'm like, I'm going to go back and do a calibrated video on that field. Waited four or five days, come back, poof, rust is everywhere, yeah. you know, and still look yeah. good, but it not like it did yep. when we was in there. So, yep. um, you know, I think boots on the ground still, yep. still a big piece at right now. Well, and, um, one thing I thought about too, one example I came Guys, if you like the information that you've seen so far, go ahead and check out the full length podcast on our YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe there. It's also on all the major plat- podcast platforms. 
Um, we're constantly dropping info and more content on all the social media platforms, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, etc. Check it out for a lot more content.